I'm not sure what type of wood that is, but it's a really hard, dense wood, so it'll make nice for a wee box because it's dry and stable. So once it's put together, there'll not be much movement in the wood. So let's proceed. So I'm just going to make the box five by five. Five inches, and we'll need to knock this bit off here. So we'll start the here. I'll put it out. five there, four sides, five, five, and I'm sure we've got enough material here. Five. Use a square. Now, although I'm doing this, I'm not going to cut it on a table saw. I'm going to put a, a stop on my sled at five inches, so really, this is unnecessary. But it's good practice. That's the size, one, two, three, four. And we use this bit here for the bottom and the lid. But after we cut it, we still need to plane these bits down to get the paint off. So that's it. <coughs> so let's get to this. one of the bits too short so probably not got enough for the lid and the box for this stuff yeah. so we'll just use this for the bottom and we shall make the lid for a different material so I'm just going to cut these up now, the same size so I know that they're 
we'll fit the lid and we'll deal with the we'll deal with the cuts later. So we shall just get ready to cut the line. have our four bits, side bits, and then our bottom bits. Now, what we need to do now is plane these bits to get the, the paint off it. And I can go about that a couple of ways. I could use the jointer to do it, um, or I could just use a table saw again just to take a thin wee slice off it. I know my table saw is square to the blade, so that would work fine. So, that's what I'll do. When you're making these types of cuts, you are close to the blade, so always be very, very careful. If you're not confident, use, you know, things to hold it so your fingers are only close to the blade, but it's simple, it's, it's common sense. So, uh, uh, before I do it, also, I'm going to move this right up close to the blade. So I'm only just taking a wee, just a wee thin slice off, no, no much at all. But so that I can achieve and make sure that all the wood stays the same size. Right, here we go. There's my four bits there, my four sides, which again, table saw, it's not perfect. It's no as precise as we would like it to be. I'll spend the big bucks for that. But it's precise enough to make a nice wee quality box. And these two are my bottoms, which this here. Yeah, make this the bottom bit. This inside. It's a shame it's got that bit there. But hey ho, nothing's perfect. So since I messed up that other bit, we're going to flatten this bit of dark hardwood for the lid. And I'm going to make this bit a bit thicker just for the shape I want to do the lid. So all the thickness of it again. Make 
show. do is that's a nice contrast from that to that to the lid so I'm just going to rough cut this out in the bandsaw um, so I only need a couple of sections there let it glue together top of this side uh, so I will just use this as a Reds, what I need to cut. I'll, I'll need to cut it anyway. Once I know the size, the lid I want to do. So we will just cut them oversized for these ones here. And I'll do. the lid which again we'll need to take the paint off these bits a few ways we can do that same way again um, the best way to do it is the table saw again but many ways we can do it even on the band saw or, not, or just by using a hand plane which I will show you that in a minute. So I'm just using a Stanley number four. And I'm just wanting to take the lightest a path just to take the paint off. And make sure you get a sharp blade. That's all it's needed. Maybe one wee mail, just take it down by that pain. If it's on flat, you're holding it steady. Just run it over. Make sure that that is square so that when you're joining the boards, they go flat. There's no gap. This one as well. Up. Oh, took it made after surface. Just started out there. Don't need that. Here, so I'll just leave it there. I'll take another fault pass. Let's check that. And that is square. So you've got to glue them up. There'll be no gap. Slightly sweet gap there, but I think that's just the paint showing. There's a plenty. Sand all this tap bit down and it's going to be getting a certain shape on it so I'm not too fussed about that that's that <coughs> and 
now I've got all the pieces, the four sides, the bottom and the lid. So after we've done that, now we need to do the joinery, which is to join all the pieces together with dovetails. And there's, there's loads of ways that you can do dovetails. Um, a lot of people do it with, with routers and that, but I like to discipline myself and practice with conventional tools, saws and chisels. They can be made in the bandsaw. It's pretty easy to make them in a the bandsaw, but they'll no be they'll no be as accurate. Maybe we got some you know like um, so you, you may have control with an actual saw a dovetail saw tenon saw right uh, um, so the first thing I do but before I do that is I see what the best faces are which this wood is uh, kind of looks the same oil so there's not really telling the difference between uh Oh, you get a wee bit of grain structure here, which is nice, and there. So I'm, I'll put these to faces, and what I do is I'll just, uh, I'll just put a wee F, and that'll tell me that this is the face side. Oh, mechanical pencils are good, but nothing I've written. Face side. And then bring them back up and I will mark them. If you can't go one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. It makes no difference as long as you remember which side to it. So I'll just put a wee one there, one there. No point putting it this side because that bit's got to be cut out. Um, two there. To here, three, three, and four, and four. That's just so when you've muddled them up, mixed them all up through cutting, but not, you know where they all go. So, to cut the dovetails, there's a few ways you can measure them up, but um, there's, there's, there's wee dovetail guides and all that. Um, I always like to date by eye so that they're always unique. Other boxes you make are, they look different, you know what I mean? So, obviously, you want to th find the depth that, um, that you're going to be going into the wood. And you can do that by just lining the wood up and scraping down the back. I always like to make the marks in the inside. And you can use a wee knife, pencil. You could use the other bit just to make sure it's completely against the edge, which is a good idea. Or you can use marking gauge. It's a good idea, I've got all that stuff there, but it's good discipline. Good discipline to do that. And obviously, all oh, the wood is the, it's the same thickness. So you could just use this side to go and do it here, but again, discipline myself. Use each side. Make sure that's some perfect line because you're using this line here as a mark as a cut depth for how much you're going to be taking these do dovetails down so there was a right. 
<coughs> using these lines here to know how much you're cutting down the dovetails. So, do it on this side as well, which again, you could mark them up with that because you know the same size. Use a square and just transfer the lines all like that. Right, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this again because there might be some discrepancies in the thickness of the wood. You know, I would just ever so slight wee bits that off. So. Put it there, make a wee mark on this one, make a wee mark, this is the sick here. So now, we've got the depth that we want to cut down the dovetails to. Mm. It's same with the same with these bits here. It's the same with these bits here. We want to transfer the size out of these ones for knowing how much we're going to cut uh, into the width for the pins for the dovetails to go into. So again, we can do that here like this. Just using the wood itself as a marker. So see, there's, there's hundreds, probably, probably hundreds of different ways that you can do this. And, but a lot of them, like a marking gauge, will scratch the wood. And you can't take the scratches out. But that's why I always like to do it in the inside. And you can just transfer them, transfer them over to the front with the pencil, which is easier. Alright, perfect there. Not bad like that. Now we've got these lines. So use your finger. Your fingers are your best tools. Nice one here. Let's just get that all away. Perfect. So, <coughs> obviously. Again, you might get it mixed up as to which the like the, the pin, the tail, the dovetail. Um, or, the, or you could call it the male and female part. The dovetail, and then the hole that the dovetail goes into. So you could just put tail on this one, tail on this one. So you know, so you don't forget, because we're all a bit forgetful. So that's it. Now, it's down to the actual joinery. Cutting the dovetails, how do we mark the dovetails out? Well, again, we can do it by eye. I usually do it by eye most of the time, to be honest with you. You can always just sort of take a rough size of the wood, and we're talking 60 mil here, so they can be spaced out. Um, 10 mil, 10 mil for each edge, um, and you can have the tails 10 mil themselves. Uh, and I'm talking about just doing two, just just two tails. So they'll be on the edge, and there'll be a nice gap in the middle, and that'll give a nice uh, mechanical fix. Look, you, know, you always. Uh, a lot of debates and about which stronger, or three tails or, or one tail. Which, to be honest, it, it doesn't matter. Look, what you, 
what you like and what you want to do. Like, it's, it's your choice, look, but looking at this here, 10 mil, but I'm going to just do it 15 mil in, so that one there, and then I'll move 10 mil to 25 mil, that one there. And same with this, it's 60, so we'll take it to the 15 millimeters, and then I'll, and there we go. So I know that that's where they're going to go. And we can do the same right here. And again, you, I don't need to show you this, so I will just put the cutter there, there, and there. Yeah. So I've got them marked out for where I want them. And again, what angle do you fit the dovetails at? It doesn't matter. Whatever you want them at. If you want them at 5 degrees, put them at 5 degrees. 10, 15. Personally, I always do them about between 10 and 15. So I'm going to do these ones at 10 here, and I'm just using this protractor. Just using this protractor here I'm going to tap and I can mark them out where I want them at. so like that right there slide that one to this other edge one that one there and I'll just go down here and do these ones before I put it on the other side Slide that line to 10 degrees this way, and I can do the other sides. Ten degrees there, and ten degrees there. Ten degrees there. to cut <laughs> the pins there so all this here is waste waste and, uh, what I do is I will so I've taken so it's this side and that side so what I will do is I will join these together Quite perfect. So your table saws are the best. I will join them together like that, and I'll cut them as one. I'll cut them as one piece. So what I'll do is I'll just put them in the base. Right. Make sure they are straight. They're not misaligned. Check for the bottom. We're off just a wee touch. So we're, we're only actually perfect on this. But that can be fixed in the final product. So that. And I will transfer the lines from dovetails to the top part oil. So it's there. There. Sides here as well, and if you could uh, use a knife and push that in there, transfer that around that side. Same with this way, push this here, transfer it up there. I'll bring this uh, here, then it. 
just gonna see what I'm doing, probably. Right. So, try and sort these lines out here like that. Use your your finger as a guide and just mark that right across there like that. And then what mark this because that's taking it out. Again, poke our finger in the hole right across. <laughs> Right, and that's them cut. Now, yeah, that's them marked. So, obviously, I'll cut these ones at the new, and we'll flip it, and we'll do the same markings on the other side before we cut it. So I've got a few different saws that I use. I mainly use this one here because it's no go. There is no hang me to it. It's just completely. It's completely flat. The so it gives you a really really thin line, but I go this new saw, which I'm probably going to regret. Mind you, but I try this saw to cut it. Which we maybe better going back here here, so you can see pretty good. these bits here we <laughs> so I will just hmm, should I use this one or not? No. No. I will use this one here. You use this one. So I will just start the initial line just on the outside it. That initial line. Now I'll find my angle, my 10 degrees. And I'll just start sawing. It's about 10 degrees, but there. And if you make a mistake, it's easy just to come back up and just readjust. Look. Then I made uh, another wee line just at the back, just off camera there, just to get a good wee eyeball it, which I've overshot that bit there, but we're all right. We ain't aiming for perfection here. And then we'll just, other one, another line, just to get me started. And then we'll get a 10 degree again, 10 degree. And just if, if you keep yourself straight, just get that wee angle straight, which again, it, again, it takes just discipline learning to know if you're straight or not. But, um, other line. Line. I always use my fingers, so I just tip my fingers like that. Make sure your finger aren't touching the saw, especially one that's got like the, like the teeth will go set and you know, one each side. Because when you put your fingers there, you got to cut your fingers. That's why I always like this one. So there's no set to the teeth, like. but if you're cutting something deep, then it could sort of get caught up in that wee bit. Like. 
So the way which I'm off a wee bit here, just adjust that. And then got a 10 degree again, but there, and off we go. There we go for the, for the main cuts. The main cuts there are pretty much on. All right, acceptable. So it's these ones are all right. These ones you can be off. It's really when you go to make the pins that they go into. They need to be really precise if you're wanting a tight fit. So obviously we're going to cut the. The sides now, and I do that by just turning them on their sides um, and cutting that way. Like. So, again, we'll do that. Like. Always put a wee cut doing this, the middle one as well, makes it easier when you're chiseling it. Makes it easier when you're chiseling out, so I just grab it tight, open it up, back in we go, holding it tight so it doesn't move. There we go. I should probably put this a bit more. And my vice is not the best vice, homemade, last me for two years now. So I do the same, get the line, and we can use the we use the mark that we done before. Okay. Tight, order, and that's pretty smooth without any chisel work. We better chisel up maybe in there just to hang that out. Next one, tight. In we go. We go. And we get then. tight and the vice again there we go and that's the sides of them done so now what I do these bits at the back now whilst they're still all tight tight square a wee bit's a wee bit tall there but we can sort that when the boxes are together and tight same procedure oh, do you know what i'll not bore you by doing them all i'll just show you the procedure how i do this i'll just take these apart again i've got the line there no one doing as much there but that's fine so usually i will use Talking about the zoom. So I, I'll just. I'm going to chisel these out now. Look at the lines, but that's fine as long as we chisel to that line, that's fine. Usually I'll use this, but you can just do it on the workbench. On the workbench. But when you use this, now you've got a nice bench to watch chisel into, and you can just use that. Push that up against, and um, then just depend on the size you're doing. Just a wee thin chisel, make sure it's sharp. We mallet. Find your line there. Oh, a weak 
Find your line there like that. I'm just going to say something else. It's fine. Line, which I'm not going to go straight, but it's alright. A wee line there. Knock the inside of this bar for now. You should really, if you're practicing this stuff, doing this stuff, then you practice with soft wood. This is really dense wood. I could just take these off for now. These. Let's zoom in so we can see what I'm doing. Taking the sides, doing a wee bit there now. And then we'll just continue to knock this down. Keep your chisel straight. Keep it straight, just less chisel what we saw. Continue to dig in for this side, this side here. Hey, you don't need to worry about this tack bit here. Once you've got all this, it'll come out and ball up. Dig in for here, here. Just keep going at an angle, at an angle. At an angle. flip it and start doing it this side now. Now I've not got a line here because I never marked that side remember but we can use a finger we can use a finger here put a pencil at this point here use a finger here as a, a reference point and just pull it along and we know that this line here is parallel with these lines here Same procedure, find your line, start, a wee knock, make sure your chisel straight, first wee bit, knock it out, keep going. Sides, gouge it but out. And I don't gouge it right down, I just loosen the fibres up. I just loosen the fibres. Keep gouging it down. These are well set in here. Just keep, see them in the way the camera here. Knocking that, knocking that. Chisel up again. Now, you could get in here with a smaller chisel. I've got a small chisel here, but it's probably just a bit too thin for the, the job that I'm trying to do. And it's not very sharp. Because I'm not sure I'm going to get it, just go with that one. Right. And we'll just keep taking bits away from it here. You can use the bevel, the bevel down as well to do it to get into it. Just make sure you don't gouge your, your pins, your tails. And just keep knocking down. We're going to hit through the other side, like that. And we can just slide them out. 
Yeah, we've got a wee teeny bit of chisel work there we need just to flatten that a bit more, which we shall do. So I'll just, I'll just hold it, use the chisel, keep, make sure the chisel's straight, and just Down. I'm not completely straight there. A wee bit up there. That's the other side as well. There we go. That's good enough for me. Even if you're off, just a slight wee bit. It helps with the mechanical grip when it goes in. And then if there is any gaps or anything, you can just, when you're gluing it, um, and you've got a wee bit of glue, squeeze it, you can just simply use a wee bit of uh, the dust, the dust here. Use that dust, which is first wood, to fill the gaps, and you'll not even see the gap there. So that's how you do that. I'm just going to proceed with doing the rest of them. Um, and once I've done them, we'll move to the other parts, the female parts, or male parts, female parts. Whatever way you want to look at them. I need to walk back. So. Now that we've got all the pins cut out, right, now we want to transfer these pins onto this bit. Again, there's loads of ways to do that, but the most simple way that I like to do is just to get a bit of scrap wood, anything as long as it's flat. Which I will take an off cut bit of the bit I was, hang bit bit I was using before. Let's see, let's just zoom in here so that we can see properly. So I will just do that there. Take the bit I'm using, so we want to join this to this. So put this in here, up against that. You bet if the vice was in a wee bit melting it. Look before we start this. Just do that in there like that. And just make sure that's relatively flat and in line with that. And then you can bring this up, make sure you've got it the right way around, which I have. Line them up, make sure the pins are. And at this point you can sort of have a wee look down and see if you've if there's going to be any wee gaps or whatnot, which I can look and I can see them. I still see a wee teeny shadow, but, but but not much. So, line pins are lined up with the wood here, and I always just like to take my chisel, which I know is I know is flat, and just sort of lay it against this bit, and that'll tell me if I'm see that I was off just a wee bit there. So I tell me if I'm straight dead on with it, which. Uh, about there, and then take the you can take the mechanical pencil and, and transfer these lines so you know exactly where to cut. Which mechanical pencil is good at getting any tight spots, but sometimes just you kind of get any out of these spot there, like right, so. And that's the marked. So we can put that back there. Um, put that back there. And we've got these lines marked now. We've got them marked, and then we took the the wood to the wood, so we know that that's how much we need to cut, don't we? 
What you get, you can just take the pencil and start that by just and again, these lines here aren't necessary. They only you can put your saw, saw blade on that, cut it down. I guarantee you'll be pretty much dead on. Um, right, And then we can obviously we can transfer this line out here if we need to, like which again I always just like to date by hand just for practice and you know discipline yourself for okay, just double check which we're pretty much spot on. And we can take these lines again here, mark them. And that's it. So, and we can uh, we can repeat a wee trick doing that. We can't do that with this one because they're, they're at a 10 degree angle and they're different so we need to do these individually. So I'll show you me how I cut these ones and then I'll move on to doing the rest of them. So obviously we need to we need to account for the thickness of this blade um, because we know that these lines here are basically on the edge and on the edge of these pins and this pencil here I don't know what's the point is point six this pencil here I know is the exact same width as this blade so I know if I cut basically just to the right ever so slightly of the lines it's going to go perfect it's about trial and error with these things like that you, you can never expect to get things dead on perfect precise your first go maybe not even your second go maybe not your third four fifth six seven eight but on that tenth try boom perfect fit so we'll cut these well, it's pretty hard to see these with the, the dark wood oh here we go right so we'll get us lined up here right there we are So obviously it's not a big deal if you, you know, you're also you don't want to cut too much this way because then you have a loose fit. So if anything, you want to cut it too small and then you can get, use your chisel to chisel it out to the right size. But of course you want to, you want to cut it on that perfect size straight away. So it's always good to take in consideration the thickness of your blade. Um, so I'll do it. Right there, I'm on. No, I'm just doing a bit too much here. Yeah. So, uh, so, 
it. I'll say, like, I Because when you kick in the angles, well, but that's the way it is, yeah. But I'll just count. I'll just count a little bit. That's pretty easy to shot, too. Just put the lanes first. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, like that. Mm. Line. I think I have one set. So, yeah. Here's your shot. Your line says, I'll just take. So, you don't know. Like doing this. Is it flex? No. 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 It's not flex. It's one of the two. It's two of those. Again. Everybody needs screen layers. And it's just like this. Not this thing. Oh, you got I was like, I'll take it in that same fashion. Oh, yeah, another one. <coughs> take a rebar and hang in the last two points. And then just chisel it like this. Rebar time. I'll get another one. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to take it outside. And that's us. That's one and I'm done. Just chiseled all out. I'm going to be high spot there. Um, might be fine, but see, when we go to dry fit it, we can see all the wee points. If there's a wee high point or what whatnot, um, and then we can adjust it for that point. So I'm going to fire on with the new, and when it's all dry, uh, when it's all cut out, we'll go for the dry fit. Right, so I think I've overshot this one a wee bit to be honest. Look. Let's test it. Right side, look. Aye, definitely less than what I want, but we'll make do what we've got and we'll continue on. Got this lined up here, and I'll, I'm going to use the just to be thin knife. You know, it's just lined up a bit of pressure down, and just gentle scores. Look. I made a mistake before about saying about saying cutting on this side yeah it's this side you want to cut on so rather than cutting right there on the line or myself mixed up I'm cutting just here you want to just cut right here right because you want a nice tight fit that's why my other fit was weaver just weaver loosely so a nice tight fit right here. That's what I'm going to cut. And just make the marks and that down here. Run that right on here. So we have got our all of it's cut out. Let's just see how they fit. There we go. I fit alright. Couple of wee bits of adjustment, but a wee bit of adjustment. No bad considering. Hmm. Uh, just maybe a wee bit out here. I think it is. Uh, a wee bit out of here. We got me out here, I think. And just a wee bit of smoothing. And we'll be good. Right back when it's all cut out and we're ready to put sides together <coughs> to show you another way um, of cutting out these um, 
next to chiseling is the, the coping saw. Now the coping saw can be a bit dodgy because you can overcut it uh, with various things, but I'll show you the coping saw, which I just sort of, I'll just sort of cut the inside to it, but then I'll finish it with a chisel, which is pretty simple. Quite a lot of material. It takes quite a lot of material, and then you can just finish it with a chisel. Just cut it down to the lines. Quicker, I guess. I. Eh? There you go. Just wanted to show this here. Cut it, and we're all right. Part for just one wee bit. Right there, you see it, it's just no big enough. And all I'm gonna do is just take my chisel and just take wee bits off. Just wee bits off it. Wee bits off it here. Just small wee bits at a time. Small wee bits, just keep testing. Mm, just another wee bit. And just keep testing. Cutting wee bits at a time. Wee bits. I think it was made up this side anyway, so wee bit made up here. Just wee bits. Testing. And I can see it. I can see it'll just stall. Let's do a smudge here. Much take the so straight. Just a wee smudge over here. You could use a, a fiddle here as well, or a rasp. I'll just leave it a sandpaper. Many tools you can use for set applications, but I'm just slicing wee bits off. Making sure we've got the right bit. Right bit. I keep going there. But maybe a bit too tight. So we'll just continue to take the wee bits off. I'm going to use the bevel up here.
See, that's the thing I've learned with, with joinery like Dirtly. You need to be patient. If you want to do joinery and you're not patient, then more than likely you're going to let all the big power tools do the job for you. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Power tools make speed everything up. But take the joy away for doing it yourself and seeing the final piece. That's why I do it. And I don't do it because it's a job and I need money. You know, I do it because I enjoy it. It keeps my mind busy. And then the end process, after all that hard work, all that thinking, all that day and working with your hands, and to see the final project, the uh, final project, that's it's worth it. There we go. Bit tight, but that's the way I like it. Nice and tight, so when you actually put it on, so a thin, thin layer of glue in it. Thin layer of glue in it. Let's see you on. Right, on we go. And as I said before, you know, if you're half just a couple of wee points of mill, just a bit too tight, you can use wee micro files, micro file and a micro rasp, but I'll show you what I mean. So, I know, like, I'm half. Just a bit too tight on this one here, so I'll just cut a wee passes with the file. I don't know if you've got too much, you know, like, a lot you need to take out and just cut a wee gentle passes with this. Look. Mainly I'll use uh, mainly I'll use the rasps just to clean up the bottom bit of the end grain because my filing, uh, my my chiseling is not the best. So just a wee, wee gentle rub with the rasp will clean it up and get a nice straight edge. I think that size of it ready look. Not bad. A couple of wee gaps here and there, which you'll get. Once the glue falls that in, look. We've got a... Yeah, that is a bit... Don't much here, but no. I'm happy with that. So, we shall get to... Do it dry. This is the last bit has to come off. Oops, one of these will come off pretty easy. Okay, so we want to put this one on first. It's not even that one. It's Fit. So we can get to glue and put this one here. We can 
check just to see if it's got any twist to it, which it has slightly, but we can correct that when we clamp it and then afterwards gentle wee bit of sanding, which you can see there's a wee twist to it. That's no point of joinery, you know, nothing's perfect. Now you're doing it all by hand, can't expect it to be perfect, you know, because each piece you make is it's going to be unique. So you, you know what? Each piece you make will be unique. So I can see there's a twist to it, but that's all right for me. And it's all nice, tight. It's all nice, tight fit. Apart for that one side there, which I overcut, which to me, I'm alright with it. You know, there's no much twist to it like that. Just a, a bit much there, uh, overcutting this one. A bit much there, but that's alright. We'll look for perfection. So, we want to take it apart and start going up. 